So I'm out here walking uh, the trail you saw in the last video out to Whitewater Preserve again over the mountains. I uh, wanted to spend this video talking about preparations for my Appalachian Trail through hike starting on March 21st of this year. In the first segment here, I want to talk about training. So while we were in Tucson, uh, property sitting for some friends, there was a Mount Wasson Peak hike nearby in Saguaro National Forest that had about 2,000 feet of gain over four miles and then four miles back down. That was the beginning uh, of the training. I do that two or three times a week. Now that we're here in Palm Springs, I'm trying to do this hike uh, at least once, maybe twice a week, uh, which is 10 miles out, 10 miles back with about 4,200 feet of elevation gain along the way. Again, trying to get the climbing legs because I know that's what's most important uh, while not overtraining. When we get to uh, uh, Pio Pico near Hamul, uh, up in the mountains above San Diego, um, I'll be hiking Hollenbeck Canyon and that's 12.4. I'll try to do that three times a week. And then when we get uh, up in the mountains further, up to Descanso, um, there's a there's some hikes up there that I can make as long as I want to with some overnights, including some steep rock scrambles, kind of getting ready for uh, more Appalachian Trail type terrain. But that's what I'm trying to do. I find that if I am doing 15 miles two or three times a week right before I leave, I'll be in good shape for the hike. And uh, we're gonna stay on that plan. And I'll do a little bit in Texas before I fly out to start the trail in March. So in the meantime, I get to enjoy this beautiful scenery out here. Just gorgeous. Desert hiking with mountains and climbing. And it's fabulous. So I'll check in with you later and we'll talk about other aspects of the preparation. All right, so let's talk a little equipment. As I've shown you before, I'm now carrying the Osprey Exos 48 liter. Without the brain, there's plenty of room and it's uh, got a nice suspension system to keep the airflow on your back. Uh, much more comfortable carrying the weight than the ultralight packs I used in the past. For trekking poles, I have the Black Diamond Trail Sport aluminum poles. I'm not gonna use uh, carbon fiber. It's too expensive and they break. All right, we finished our big climb. And we'll start the first big descent down into the valley. And I think I'm gonna have my lunch under that bush there. And we can talk about the cook kit. So for my cook kit, I use the Soto Windmaster stove. It's got a nice big platform and it does really handle wind really well uh, when you're trying to cook. So you don't have to set up a windscreen as readily as you would with other stoves. I tried the little cheap one off Amazon, but the platform's so small that your food's in danger of falling off of it all the time. And then I also use this MSR Titan uh, kettle. And uh, this is big enough for, you want to throw a whole, ba a whole bag of instant mashed potatoes in with, uh, with a tuna packet and some other things and really mix it up and make a big meal. There's plenty of room in there. On some of the smaller uh, pots, I actually maxed out. So this is much better. And then for a food bag, I use the Hilltop Packs extra large bag because uh, uh, once you get to five days of food, you can max out the other ones. So... That's it for the cook kit. And here's a few more thoughts on training. If you're gonna to train to hike through the mountains, you really need to hike in the mountains. You need to hike with significant uh, 
elevation gain, rocky terrain, occasional scrambles, just so you can prepare yourself. I also believe that you should be training with as close to your full pack weight as possible. Um, the only thing I leave out in a starting pack is maybe a day's food. I try to practice with three days food, two liters of water, and everything I would normally carry. And I would rather do that and start off with low mileage and build up than do longer walking with uh, non-realistic loads. So a hike like this is just perfect, especially at this stage in training. 10 miles each way with an overnight to shake down your camping equipment. But this one's got over 4,000 feet of total gain and lots of rocky terrain to pick your way through. Um, very irregular, which is what trains you for. For your, your feet, legs, your hips, your back, everything, and your attitude. Um, also, it trains your CO2 tolerance. So that's the key to climbing without having to stop and gasp for breath, is you work up your tolerance to CO2, and, uh, and then you can climb without breathing hard. So all these things help me a lot, and that's what I'm practicing this time with gradually increasing mileages. Well, we're closing in on uh, the Whitewater River. We'll be there soon. And uh, when we do, we'll go over the camping equipment. All right, now we just work on the descent. We're gonna do switchbacks. See some of them there, and then you see the path all the way down at the bottom. It goes out to the river, and we'll cross it and be at the preserve. So I've been fiddling around and figured out all the guy line lengths and what needs to be tied up and what doesn't on this Perea Bryce one person. Um, had to make different length cords. These tie outs on the side are important to get the rain fly off of the net. It's a nice little vent back here. It's also important to have this guy line to pull that out for ventilation. And we'll take a look inside. And you can see I have the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite sleeping pad. It's mummy shaped, so it leaves a lot of room down at the end. My pack lays in there. All my water bottles, my shoes if I need to. Um, I've got the Sea to Summit Eros pillow. I put a buff over that for a pillow cover so I can keep it clean, wash the buff. And that's been a great pillow for me. And then this is the Catabatic Gear 15 degree quilt. And the toe box zips up and I've been in some pretty cold weather with it and it's really warm when I need it. I also, if it gets cold, I have a enlightened equipment Torrid Apex jacket. It's like a puffy, but it's synthetic. So if it gets wet, it still keeps you warm. That's really important to me. And then for active hiking, I have this Kuyu 97 fleece, super lightweight, breathable, just a nice mid layer. So I can go from uh, just my hiking shirt to adding this, to adding the uh, wind jacket, to adding the poncho, and then if it's super cold, I can add the, the puffy jacket as well. I do have sleeping clothes, a complete set, um, leggings, shirt, socks to sleep in that I keep dry in that bag and everything. All this stuff that has to stay dry is in a trash compactor bag inside my pack. So all of this stuff is what I'll be using on the AT. Uh, and I'm really liking the setup so far. It's been working great for me. Here's some odds and ends for my water. I have a two liter Canuck bag, which is great because you can open up that top and it's very wide. You can collect water easily. For the Appalachian Trail, I'll just need two one liter bottles max. So let's say I have a carry to camp. I got up to four liters I can carry, but I don't think I'll ever need that. And I use the Sawyer Squeeze filter to filter all my water. If it's super stagnant or suspect, I also have tablets um, to sterilize it. Um, the Gatorade bottle is my 
tent to pee bottle. It keeps me from ever having to get out of the tent at night to pee, which is fabulous. And then over here is the wind jacket, which folds up into itself. That's a Mont Bell wind parka. And then the snug pack patrol poncho with the sleeves and fits over the pack and everything. And then I got a pair of REI rain mitts that'll go over my uh, little wool gloves I have um, if, I, if it gets really cold. And then a little bear hanging kit with a uh, cord and a carabiner and I do the PCT hang when I feel it's necessary. Most of the time I sleep with my food. Um, I found it to be really safe and on the Pacific Crest Trail a bunch of people who hung it got it stolen. So I'm going to do that. Well, I got around a little earlier this morning. I was able to cross the Whitewater River both ways with dry feet. And uh, now we're starting to climb up. So since I got around a little earlier, I'm now headed up this canyon and the climbing switchbacks about the time I started out of the preserve last time. So really getting to enjoy the sunrise. So, we've gone over most of the equipment, save the electronics, which is just a 10,000 milliamp battery and all the cords you need. Um, a med kit, which is band-aids, ibuprofen, uh, neosporin, stuff like that. All pretty straightforward. Um, I do want to say on the training hikes, uh, if you're just starting out and you haven't ever hiked at all, then of course you got to go easy and build up. Um, I try to keep a baseline where I would not have much trouble doing five to seven miles of the pack. And I keep that in place so that when I get ready for a longer trail, um, I use that baseline to then train up from. So I might be different than some other folks. And we're finishing the, uh, the trip back uh, across this uh, near monoculture of brittle bush. There's a few creosote in here, but it's, uh, it's pretty much one plant. Got about three miles to the highway to get picked up. So once I get two and a bit out, I'll call Christy and tell her I'm an hour from the highway. Well, thanks for coming with me. If you guys have any questions about training, equipment, etc., you know, please feel free to put them in the comments section and I'll get back to you and uh, answer any additional questions this might have generated. 